I am Matthew Syrett, and last week we looked at how we could model this sci-fi motion tracker inside of Maya. We built the box and the screen, as well as adding these buttons in. And in this video, what we're going to look at is actually creating these dials, this switch here, and also this battery box. So let's get started. So I'm just going to model um, this uh, knobbly bit here, dial. Okay, so if I grab a cylinder, now the thing with this was it was to be also, I didn't want to just completely copy off uh, this here. So, uh, sorry, not that one, uh, the alien isolation one. So I did make some changes like these buttons, like these knobbly knobs here. Knobbly knobs. Never mind. <laughs> uh, dials, dials, Matt, not knob, knobbly knobs. Anyway, uh, so let's have a quick look at this one. So you can see, I've got my cylinder. So let's make the actual cylinder bit first. And what I'm going to do is grab, press control, two face, two face. I'm just going to extrude this then extrude down. Then we'll grab the edges and go bevel. I'm going to put this to about 0.3. I don't want too much. Now if I take the wireframe off, you can see it's just kind of softening that edge a little bit. Um, now for these bits, all I did was, is if I just grab a square, and I'm just going to make sure it's in line with these. A little bit thinner. And get rid of the face. And just bring these in a little bit here. So once I've got that, I can line this up how I want. So we're going to the top view. Now at this point, I'm just going to freeze the transformations and sense the pivot. So I've got this, and just create a bit of here. Okay, does that actually sit? No, it just sits under the lip. Thought it did. Now you can either have it sitting over the lip, or under the lip, not directly on the lip, because what you'll get is you'll get Z fighting here, where two part, two faces are trying to fight for the same space. So if we just slightly put it under. And did I bevel the top edge? No. Yes. Yes. No. No, I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bevel these two edges. No. Nope. Uh, point two. And after that, I'm just going to clean it up because that's an angle. So grab the multi cut tool. That's not it, so let me just delete that by pressing delete. There you go. Now, we don't have to fix the bottom one because we're just going to delete it because you're not going to see it. And it's the same with the bottom of this as well. So if I grab the faces and go delete. Now, a quick way of doing that because it's a cylinder is if we move the pivot to the snap it to that vert there I can now press control D and hold J and I can snap rotate this in now you could use a normal map for this I went with actual geometry Uh, select all of it and combine it. There you have your um, uh, dial. Got it right this time. Uh, 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create the bottom section of this. Now, the reason why I've just gone and selected those, I hold control to get to these, uh, this menu. Just gonna delete that. Now, the reason why I've just got a plane is because that's where the dial is gonna be for the um, alphas. So, uh, there's markings if I just grab um, these markings, and I'm just gonna put an alpha over the top of this one. That's where you get it from. Again, probably a point three bevel. I'm just going to combine these together. Maybe not that. <laughs> so I just uh, control Z to do that. And to get these menus, it's just shift and control. Control is the normal selection mode, shift is your tools. That's all I'm using, which obviously you can't see me pressing. I should really get like a camera shot here of the buttons I'm pressing. And I just realized I used my hand to explain that, but you guys can't see that, so sorry about that. Okay. They're probably a bit fatter than the ones are, but never mind. I mean, I could change it if I wanted to. I could make this. Smaller. I'm going to keep it there. That's two. So to begin with, uh, I am going to just combine these together. That's fine. Um, so that's my two buttons sorted. Now, the other thing is, it's the same, uh, but what I did with that one is, is I just grabbed and what I did, two faces, extrude, and then what I did was extrude. So that you get that end bit here. I'm just going to extend this out a bit because I don't want end guns. I'm going to delete the interfaces because, again, not going to need that. There you go. Merge. I'm going to straighten this out. Hold J, snap, rotate that. do the same here. I'm just grabbing the verts. I'm going to do that on here as well. And then what I can do is, if you'll notice that this is, if we take it off wireframe, you see, you can see, you can see the normals. So what we're going to do is, edge ring to edge ring, deselect these edges because these are going to need to be hard. Soften edge. And there you go. Uh, and then select these top edges. Now, before I do that, actually, I'm going to tidy this up a bit. 
because yeah, I don't need that. And then just to make sure it's even, let's grab edge there, edge there. Do you know what? We could even. And when you optimize it, it's all about looking at. We'll keep that in actually, because I don't think actually no no. There you go. It's about does it change the silhouette? So when you're optimizing, does it change the silhouette of what you're trying to make? If it does, don't get rid of it. Is it is it is it actually doing something? Is it holding a piece of geometry in place? Is it supporting the geometry? Is it stopping it from getting those really weird angles on the normals? If that's the case, keep it in. If not, get rid of it, because there's no point in it being there. It's just probably construction lines. Now, what I'm going to do now is... Bevel it. That's a weird one. Hello. Yep, there you go. I had an edge. I had a vert not merged. Uh, went to again. Yep. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom. Might have to clean this up a little bit. Oh, no. Let's grab that and that and that. Let's get rid of these. Again. Do you need it? No. Did it change anything? No. Bevel point two. There you go. And let's just clean this up. It's all about practice assessors, like figuring out what needs to go where and that sort of stuff. And it's it's like that. You saw the strain on it, so that's we don't want to do that. I'm just gonna thingy that. Also, I noticed a rogue vert there, so let's. Thingy. Let's grab all of it and merge. Right. Okay. So we've got our and these are a bit too big, I think. So let's dumb them down a bit, and I can just delete that. Okay. So I've got my control panels, that sort of stuff. Mine's a bit bigger, but oh. Now, one thing I did notice with this one is the this bit here is, and it, it was pointed out to me by one of my colleagues actually as well. It's like dead flimsy. So, if I'd had time, I would have changed it. And I'm going to change it on this one. We're going to have a flick switch instead, instead of like a big like stick thing. So once I've uh, might put the minus one, uh, what I'll do is combine them both together. Hello, uh, combine. There we go. Grab the verts, merge. Always control delete. If you don't, it'll leave the verts. And if you are struggling with this, go and visit my um, introductory series to Maya on this um, channel and it will help you. Uh, click the edge. Bevel. Uh, probably a point 0.4 this time. Um, but as you can see on the original, it's got this click thing. And even on the um, this here, you can see that it's like thingy ball. I think it's quite flimsy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a different switch. So again, I'm just going to grab a square. Now a lot of this detail could be baked. Like this definitely could be baked, uh, dependent on uh, whether the player is going to interact with it or not. 
Um, if the player wasn't going to interact with it, it was just on the arm. There was no like button pressing. Perfectly understandable to bait that detail in. Same with the dials as well. But the idea was this: the player actually interacted with this, so you, you want the geometry there to be able to animate it. I'm just going to create this box. And again, I'm just going to I'm going to use Boolean. Some people don't like using Boolean. It, it all depends. There's, there's still cleanup. And I think that's why some people don't like it, is that there's still cleanup once you make something. But everything that you make, you're going to need to clean up. Like, there's nothing comes out perfect straight off the bat. I'm just going to make this bigger. Like that. And then I'm going to use the multi-cut tool as well. Should have made a copy. I do apologize if this is going really quick, but I am. Oh, no, no, center it. Just going to get rid of that and then uh, again add this kind of bevel in there. Again, a bit too extreme, but 0.3 will do it. And if you were to bake this, you would need bevels in there because uh, you can't bake on a 90 degree angle because you can't see it. <laughs> That's just generally. Like, I have students sometimes who say, why can't I see, like, anything on the normal map? And it's like, have you put a bevel in this? Because technically you're just baking straight down and you can't see it. And it's like, oh, okay. I don't know why I'm beveling that, yeah? Because I'm talking about beveling. Anyway, uh, let's... I just gotta clean this up. Now, what I could do is this. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna multi cut it. Now I could just do it all the way around, but what I'm gonna do is 
just so it's a little bit quicker, is just up here. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let's soften the normals. Let's flip it. Okay, so I'm just going to use the target weld to uh, carry on with this. Okay. Let's bring this in a bit. And I'm just going to isolate this so I can see it. Okay. Combine this together. I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. There you go. And then what I'm going to do is just delete this face, combine this together. And make sure it's in the middle. Don't know why I just extruded that, never mind. Ignore that. And then I can combine that to that. Combine. And if I want to make this slightly bigger, there you go. I got my switch. Uh, what else? Let me show you the wire, um, and then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to model this, but I'm not going to talk or anything like that, it's just going to be a speed model. And then we'll come back and we'll do the um, hinges and uh, this bit here.
Okay, so we've now got the, uh, I've now modeled the battery box and it's pretty similar way of how we've worked. Uh, I'm not happy with this, so what we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I think I did this on the last one as well. I changed it because I'm just not happy with that geometry. It doesn't flow very well. So I'm gonna fix that by And there you go. Geometry is a little bit better that way. Okay. So I've got my battery box and all that. I've kind of modeled quite a lot of it. Um, the next thing I'm going to model is this bit here to show you how I just do the cylinder stuff. Uh, and then I'll show you the wire. And then the rest of it, just use what I've already been using. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at how I modeled the cylinder as well as the cable. And we're also going to start to UV this prop. So, see you next week.